Cool. Awesome. Uh, thank you all for having me. Uh, are we, you good? Yeah. All right, we're good. I'm getting the thumbs up from everyone. So thank you, everyone, for having me. Uh, thank you for staying until the very last session. I know everyone may be hearing uh, drinks getting ready on the other side, so we'll be sure to get through this uh, in an appropriate amount of time and allow a lot of socializing to happen afterwards. Uh, my name is Brent Beer. I'm one of the solutions engineers here at GitHub, um, helping people use GitHub, get set up with GitHub. Uh, previously was a trainer, so uh, I'm not I'm used to getting in front of people and teaching them. So we'll be we'll be doing a little live demo a little bit later, which is always nerve wracking, but we'll see the uh, how it turns out here at the end. Uh, so just a show of hands, uh, how many people use uh, the command line interface at all in any development that they do? So quite a bit. Okay, so I kind of have a choose your own adventure with the presentation here a little bit. Uh, we'll see. We'll see where we get out with time, but we'll we'll play around with both. Uh, the the difference there is that I'm going to be using maybe the command line interface or GitHub Desktop to deal with some of these large files. Um, I've downloaded Git LFS or Git Large File Storage on my laptop. Uh, I can also download it from the graphical client of GitHub Desktop. So both options for workflows there. Uh, and in case you don't know what Git and GitHub is, I, I know it's been talked about a little bit today, but maybe uh, there's a little bit uh, more I can describe about it. Uh, I only have you know, 30 minutes to explain large files, so I don't really have time to go through the full three to six hour class that we normally have uh, to explain about Git and GitHub. Um, so, so Git itself is the boring definition, is that it's a distributed file storage that's a directed acyclic graph, uh, which is the most terrible description you can ever use when you're in front of anyone uh, at a class trying to describe what this means, especially if they don't know graph theory. Um, not very, very easy to learn. Uh, but basically what this means is that we're going to have a full copy of the repository on our machine when we're working on it. This means I don't need a network connection to make any of these uh, changes in history or these commits, uh, kind of taking a snapshot of what my current directory actually looks like. So as I make some changes, I maybe decide to work on a branch to experiment with some changes, not to affect the, the master uh, stream of development that we kind of see at the top of the screen here. Um, and these revisions are usually pretty granular. So whether it's just slightly tweaking some image file, maybe you're messing with the sound by, that goes with some 8-bit game you're playing around with or you're updating documentation about some application you want to contribute to, uh, these commits are usually very granular that collectively tell a story. Um, and the only other commands that we really need the network for is going to be the push and pull commands. Or on the graphical client, that's going to be the sync button. So depending on what kind of commands we end up using, uh, I'm, I may use a push command to send things up to GitHub, or pull in case anyone's updated anything from GitHub and get that back down to my machine. So uh, you know, for time's sake, I'm not going to sit here and teach us. But if you, if you want to learn more about your, uh, Git and GitHub yourself, uh, training.github.com is a great location for that. We have open source training uh, cheat sheets uh, in many languages. And if you know some that aren't up there, please contribute, and I'll accept your pull request, uh, as well as classes, self-paced, as well as taught, and uh, in person if you'd like that as well. All right. So this is basically my last slide that we have. So uh, just to talk through a scenario that we're often in, and, and I'm sure this has been talked about a little bit today, or you've run into these situations before. There's a, there's a project that you're working with, and there's files in it that are large. And when I say large, I'm not really talking too large by today's standards. I mean about 100 megabytes or more. So it's not like a, a dramatically uh, or drastic huge file. Uh, this can be a, a small MOV or a JPEG or some Photoshop image itself. And on GitHub, we, we have a restriction in place that if that file is over 100 megabytes, we reject your push. Now the reason for that is Git just doesn't deal with large files very well, or traditionally it didn't deal with large files very well. Um, that, that's because of the way it, it looks at one diff to another. If I had a 100 megabyte file on disk and I edited it and now it's 120, that's now taking 220 megabytes on disk. So as we have gigabytes or terabytes of these files, these things obviously start to accumulate quite a lot of space. So this can be an issue uh, with us. And also, if it's a binary file, like 
uh, a movie or a sound file, Git can't really render a difference in these two versions. Uh, Git traditionally just looks at text. It says, this is the line that I traditionally knew about, and now it has a period at the end of the sentence, or it has a question mark, or you used uh, more descriptive wording to describe what this function actually does. Git's really good at that, but um, it doesn't do well when the file is not text. It has no way to look at the previous version to the, the more recent version. Um, but GitHub can. That's, that's kind of where GitHub comes in. So let me exit the slideshow here. Um, so up on the screen, we have kind of a traditional pull request. I'll, I'll, I'll start there to get us used to what this is going to look like. Uh, we have Lee Riley, who, uh, a colleague of mine who is contributing to this game, this iOS game that's up on uh, GitHub. And he essentially said, you know, this game is missing a, the actual image for the way it looks on your home screen. Uh, so if you include this uh, pull request or you accept this pull request, it'll actually look correct. So we have kind of the, the, the before and after images here. Some conversation takes place. Uh, he basically gets one thumbs up for some contributor. Uh, and then the main contributor thanks him and then accepts the pull request. Great, so that's kind of the ideal situation we're always looking for. Some amount of changes, some conversation, um, and, and people to talk back and forth and then accept the change. And furthermore, the files here, uh, we can always see what changed. Now I said Git is really good at text-based diffing. Um, so with just this text, we can see this here. Uh, GitHub's also gonna render what the image file actually looks like, so for this, it's the very first image, so we just see the image. But what happens if Lee was updating the old image to a new image? What would that look like? So again, I pull from Lee Riley's examples. Uh, Lee used some uh, Gears of War images to show old versions of maps to new versions of maps. Now, our, our human eyes are pretty good at seeing what the difference is as graphics get a little bit better and things get updated. Um, but it would be a little bit better if we could actually see these side by side. And so that's what GitHub allows us to do. And we've had this support for a really long time. Now, it's pretty good to see the deleted and added on the uh, left and right sides here. But even better when we swipe between the two. So we have, if I can find my slider here, we can actually see the way the file previously looked on these different versions. So that's pretty good. So imagine we're working with a mock-up between two, design, uh, two designers are working on editing some file and someone says, I don't really know what's changed between these. These are images, I can't tell the difference. Well, if you have an image on GitHub, you can see that. Uh, similarly, the onion skin, you kind of just peel it back and see the way this changed. Um, it's come quite a long way. And this is true for all these images on here as well. Um, pick a good one here. So this is nice for images, um, but as we have rendered files, maybe we work with a 3D printer because we, we want to see what it would look like if that character model we were actually going to print it or have in game, what it would look like in the figurine that we're getting ready to sell in all of our stores. So if we have an image that's going to be an STL file, Wi-Fi uh, was standing here, if we have a 3D image that's stored as an, a .STL file, and the way that file is actually structured, is just going to map out all these different points. This is actually going to render as well. So we can see this just in the browser, see the way this file, uh, this gear itself used to look and the way it's been uh, made changes to. So traditionally in Git, green means added, red means taken away. Um, and we can play with this a little bit as well. We can see the highlight or the revision slider. So I can go to the way it is now, to the way it used to be. So we're able to slide in on this and actually get a really good idea of the way these change. So these are some of the ways we start looking at large, or large files, or at least uh, non-standard text files actually being uh, rendered out on GitHub. Perfect. So past this, what's it actually look like when we have a repository? So what, what's it like to actually work with this system? Uh, so I. I had this repository set up, uh, unrealistic demo. Uh, I'm one for puns. Uh, I see zero smiles or laughs, but I'll accept it for now. <laughs> hey, there it is, prompted. 
So I have this repository that's set up. And one of the important parts of this project to note is the dot attributes file. This is an important file with git LFS that specifies what type of files we're going to be looking for that we classify as large files. So I said here uh, we need to track, and this is very small, so I apologize. We need to track any file ending in .gif or .jpg. Uh, one thing missing from this is MOV. So I'm going to go through adding that. And I'll show two different flavors of this so we can keep all parties interested. Let me switch over to, so let me pull this onto the screen. All right, so this is GitHub desktop. And we can see in here that we can see the past version of this uh, repository. And we can see the commits that have been made on it so far. So uh, the update to the readme, me adding the git attributes file, et cetera. Not a lot really going on with this. If I wanted to add another file to that dot, another file extension to look for in that dot attributes file, I can go into the repository settings under repository and then repository settings. And under git LFS, add another type here. Uh, instead of doing that here, and I'm just going to delete this so I don't add it, I'm going to do this on the command line. Now there's, uh, as I was setting this up and practicing this, there is one little caveat to note on the command line. It's uh, always wrap everything in quotes. Otherwise, you get into possibly some sticky situations. So let me pull this over. So I have my terminal window here. Make sure this font is big enough. All right, so git status always going to tell me, again, kind of where I'm at, what's going on. But I want to tell LFS, or git LFS more correctly, uh, to add another file to that, uh, add another file type to that attributes file. So git LFS track, and then in quotes, as I uh, correctly found out, MOV. So it just says, all right, now it's going to track an MOV file. That's cool. So git status. So I've made an update to that file. Um, but more appropriately, I want to move an MOV file into this repository. So I'm going to, um, on the other screen, click and drag an MOV file onto my repository, or into a folder here. Oops. Status. So we see that GitHub review class uh, from back in September of last year. Uh, it's about 123 megs, so it would hit that limit on GitHub. It'd get rejected as I pushed it up there. Uh, and so I want to add this to the repository. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new branch. I'm going to call this track MOV, or track add LFS files. Then create branch. Uh, we can see the uncommitted changes here of the one line being added there and the MOV file being added here. Now, in GitHub Desktop, as you start adding files uh, that are images or otherwise, they also get brought into kind of rendering on the side. Of course, a movie is not going to fully render here, uh, which is quite nice. So my first commit here, because I want this to be granular, I'm just going to be adding the tracking of this one file. So again, everything's local so far. I haven't done anything over the network connection. Uh, and I'm just going to say add MOV uh, file to track. Uh, normally, I want to do a better commit message that as a subject line I can look at later and read back to it or look back at it and know exactly what I did. So maybe I'd say add GitHub review MOV file. So I'm going to go ahead and commit that. So we see that uh, graph at the top move forward by one commit. Um, and then I have a David Tennant GIF. We have any Doctor Who fans in the room. Uh, and I have a six-year-old Brent image as well. Uh, let's see. There we go. So we have David Tennant. And we have a young Brent beer. Great. I tried to find one of me like with video games or something like that to relate to this. But uh, couldn't find one, so I had Ninja Turtles. So I have uh, add GIF and JPEG for tracking large files. Great, let's go ahead and commit that. All right, so I'm doing my committing from the desktop, but to, I want to show everyone that as I do a push from here, 
um, it's actually going to create a, uh, it's going to kind of store that, that work off to the side. And we can see that when we do that actual push event. So I'll just double check, git push dash u origin add LFS files. Now when we, there's a create pull request button from the top of the desktop application. That will take care of doing all this for us, but uh, I know a lot, of, a lot of developers who use the desktop client because they want to see that more visual diff as they go forward editing files. Um, so I'm just going through doing both sections here. So that's gonna push it up. We see it dealing with the large files right now, pushing all of those files up. Um, I said the MOV was a, around 130 meg, uh, so that's the details here. Uh, when testing this, the Wi-Fi was a wee bit stronger, so uh, it's all of your faults for being on the Wi-Fi, uh, slowing everything down for us. So as that actually pushes and goes up to the web, I'll be able to actually create a pull request for that. So let me switch back over here and go back to my desktop, or go back to the root of the repository here. This might actually lag out on us. So once that actually gets up on the desktop, or it gets uh, from our laptop or a desktop out to the actual server, we're able to uh, work with that large file and see that pull request. And I'll show that in just a minute. Actually, one thing I do want to show, a lot of people often say, well, how do I know that file I'm working with is being tracked? Uh, I'm just going to open a new tab here and say git show. So what git LFS is actually doing is it's not storing that full binary on disk. It's storing a pointer to that. Um, so we see the, the version of LFS we're using there with uh, pointing to the spec that it's using, uh, the size of the file, and then the actual object identifier. Uh, so that object identifier is what it's using to know where in our storage system it's actually being recorded. And if we wanted to look deeper into the system, I could go into the .git folder locally uh, and find this file or find these references to this file. But that's how we know it'll actually say OID, the size and the version, uh, when it's using LFS. If you don't see this, uh, you may have to use a reset command to go back a commit and make sure you add that file to the attributes file or start tracking it with git LFS track. Um, before you actually make your commit, because you, you want to start tracking these from the get-go. All right, let's see if I yammered on long enough to get that to send. Of course I didn't. So a lot of people say, um, well, what's the difference here? All right, you, you're still storing the file. You're still, be, still maybe taking up enough space on someone's laptop. The difference is that as I go from version to version or I continue to edit these large files, on our servers, they're not taking up as much space, not in the Git repository on the server. Uh, we're only looking at one version at a time. And as we look at these large files on the server, maybe we look at them in a pull request, or we're going to look at them uh, as we browse the files themselves, we'll note there that it's actually a Git LFS file. And as backup, because uh, you always have backup on a talk, um, I actually did this for my previous talks, their keynote files. If I can find my mouse here. So we can see a keynote file that I have here, or a couple MP4s. Uh, and it mentions that this file is stored with Git LFS. So if I want to view the raw version of this, I can click that. Uh, it'll go out to where we store that on GitHub and download it. But of course, because the, the Wi-Fi, oh, there we go. I was going to make it a, a excuse for it, I go ahead and save that MP4. So I can work with that individual uh, file itself. But we know when browsing around on GitHub that this file is actually an LFS file and stored there for us. Uh, and so maybe also when you're collaborating with other teams of people who don't work with these assets, you, they don't need all the versions of that asset, they don't necessarily need that. With LFS, they can, you can save the amount of time it takes for them to clone the repository, pull the repository down and actually work on it, whereas someone who's not doing the large assets can write the documentation, write the functions, whatever it is that keeps the, uh, keeps the files short for them and their workflow a lot easier. Perfect. All right. So that's all I had for LFS. If you're interested in more, please reach out to me, ask me questions. I'll be hanging out here for a little while. 
Uh, you can always reach out to our services team, services at github.com, or email me directly, brent at github.com, and I'm more than happy to answer additional questions about LFS. So thank you all for attending, and I look forward to talking to some of you. Thanks. I suppose we have time now for questions, if anyone wants to ask questions publicly, but I always wanted to give everyone a scapegoat to waiting until later to ask me questions. So I guess we'll pass around mics. Are there more mics? Thanks. I was really surprised to see the, uh, the STL file comparison. Yeah. Is, or is there going to be FBX or any other more game-specific assets? Uh, I wish. I don't know. I, uh, it it kind of depends on the rendering team. Uh, they work with a, a lot of stuff that renders on GitHub. Uh, PDFs and I think photo, maybe Photoshop files also render. Uh, I know PDFs definitely render, though. So it's a, kind of a, a work in progress there. Well, they see there it goes eventually. Cool. Thank you. Any additional questions? Nope. Awesome. So if anyone wants to come up to me and ask me questions uh, afterwards, please feel free to.